Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and on this rainy Monday night, I bring you a video of my own. With the current event going on to celebrate two years of warships, you get a super container for running every single one of your tier 10 ships, or you get one per tier 10 that you do run. So, no doubt, I've been playing at least each one of my tier 10s once. This was the only game I had in my Minotaur, and it is by far the most rewarding and the funnest game I've had in a long time. And playing on Northern Lights, the balance of the match is pretty good, I'd say. There's a lot of 10s, eh, one or two 9s, and then some 8s. So, for me, spawning on the north, the obvious place that I'm going to go off the start is pretty much behind this island on the northern edge of Bravo. And the main reason? Solid land, good shell arcs, and it'll probably get me close enough to some stuff that I can actively fire. So you can see, pushing it as close as I can, because I really want to keep myself from getting detected. Sadly, some aircraft see me, so I am forced to use my smoke. Now what I find interesting at the time is I really would have expected to have been radared at this point, but I'm not. And I think part of it is that Yugamo is detected, the Baltimore had shots, so it wasn't too concerned about the tier 10 cruiser that did 13,000 damage to it. Oh well, his loss, my game. And right here, you can see why this is a decent spot. Now, obviously I can tuck in tighter to the island, and if my smoke were to run out, I would. The other great thing about this position is it provides some good air cover to the destroyers there. You can see me absolutely slaughtering any of the aircraft that are pushing in, trying to detect those friendly destroyers. Meanwhile, I'm just making this Missouri hate his day. Just that constant stream of shells. Now, admittedly, I am sitting very still. But because the Missouri never looks directly my way, I'm not too concerned about potential incoming fire into the smoke. If they're looking your way, you gotta make sure you're moving around in the smoke and not giving them a constant target to fire at. So it's pretty much this point, as the smoke's about to dissipate, I decide I have to move a little farther forward and get in behind the rock. That quickly turns into, well, there's a lot of stuff over at A, and there's a gearing that's turning this way. Maybe I can press in, get a little lucky, and get a quick kill on a very dangerous destroyer. First volley, way off, and I am going to have some good support from that friendly CD who's kind of forcing the gearing to sail in a straight line and dodge torpedoes, and as a result, I managed to slowly work him down, finish him off for the first kill of the game. Next up is this enemy Montana, and I'm definitely feeling the heat here. You can see a lot of torpedoes coming my way, I'm way too close to an enemy battleship. Like, he could easily wreck me. But if I can dodge the torps, I've got my smoke, I can support this Bismarck. And there's enough other ships around that it's going to be a useful place to put the smoke. So with the consumable available again, I smash that button and get back to work just trying to do damage to this Montana as a pair of my torpedoes hit her. And you can see I basically just lock my guns onto the same position and I'm free to look around making sure that nothing's getting close sneaking up on me. And already I get that little achievement, the fabulous fuse for 50,000 main battery damage that this you know, event has as part of the collections. And this Montana is just melting under the gunfire. Now each volley may not be massive amounts of damage, you know, one, two, three thousand, but when you've got one of those every two seconds or so, it adds up 
really quick. So I've got some obvious choices to make here. Where do I go next? We've got Bravo. You know, I could sail all the way over to Charlie or Delta. But that's not really useful. And there's a couple destroyers in Alpha. So I decide I'm a fast firing cruiser. I'm going to go destroyer hunting. And what I'm actually initially thinking here is just getting close enough to the land that Hydro can detect them. When I was thinking that, I didn't realize Hydro was about to run out. Thankfully, it was active though. Get these torps detected nice and early, so just steer the ship lazily through them. And, well, planes. That kind of blows the plan. Fortunately, the Shimikaze makes my decision easy. You can see our friendly gearing here. Well, he's caught the attention of the Shima, and the Shima's kind of going YOLO. I'm not sure why it decided, since I've been detected all this time, but it is pushing in hard, and I'll take it, because these British cruisers absolutely wreck DDs. The Minotaur most of all, just because of that rate of fire. And now that's two kills, 100,000 damage, and we're coming up on seven minutes in. That said, we're not in the best place as a team. They've got three of the caps, or almost three of the caps, and while the kills are equal, they've taken down three of our battleships. We've got two of their destroyers, so there's a bit of an advantage there, but the gearing burns down, and that really starts to put that enemy team on top. Now, to make matters a little bit worse, we've got another Minotaur that it just really doesn't make a smart decision here. At least I feel doesn't make a smart decision. You can see me personally, I'm steering off, trying to keep a bit of middle distance, and I put my smoke up to make sure I'm not seen. He, on the other hand, charges broadside out so he can get a torpedo ball out. Fair enough, he's probably killed that Missouri, but he could have killed the Missouri safely from behind that rock. And that's really what bugged me about that move. And then to top it all off, he doesn't kill the Missouri. Thankfully, I'm here. I've got friendly Akazuki providing some spotting. Well, was providing some spotting until he wound up behind my smoke. And, well, the Missouri, she shouldn't be too long for the world. And I definitely got lucky there. Once again, I'm sitting really side on. The Missouri takes a shot. I just luck out that it doesn't hit any citadels and do any massive damage. And then I finish her off before she can reload. And you can right now really see kind of the downside to the Minotaur. Sure, I'm in smoke, but because of the rate of fire, there's this constant update of where your position is. If you're a battleship or a cruiser with one of those longer reloads, you can shoot all your guns and move about enough in the smoke that even if people have kind of dialed in where you were and are just waiting for that next volley to fire, just to confirm it, when you fire you're in a different position and they don't have a firing solution and they are kind of forced to guess. Now we are starting to fall way behind. They're at nearly 600 points. We're down to six ships versus their eight, I think. Yeah, eight. And they've got more caps, they've got more cap points. Things are looking a little dire. Now, one of the things that is gonna help us out here is actually their Yugamo deciding to try to torque me. Now, I get lucky. They're in a position. I've got the rudder shift that I easily steer around them. But that's basically told me where their destroyer is. And their destroyer is doing exactly what our destroyer is doing. You can see our Shimikaze making a beeline straight for their Lexington. Well, their Yukimo is heading straight for her Shikaku. Fortunately, because he threw torps at me, I was already turned around, sailing in the right direction. So when he opens fire on Gaishu, well, I know where he is. And I'm not firing my guns right here. 
simply because I was trying to slip away from the Zhao and wanted to go undetected. Wasn't really thinking about all the aircraft overhead at the time, but I'm getting to the range where the Zhao's having a harder time hitting me. The other big reason I obviously want to disappear is ideally this Yugamo doesn't know I'm coming. I've got Hydro up, I'm ready, and I just need those planes to get shot down. And my A is doing his job, Gaishu's taking them out too, but I close the distance before that happens, and once again, not going to take very long for a British cruiser to kill a destroyer at this kind of range. So, quick couple volleys, he is dead, and I can get my butt turned around, heading back to A, where I was going to go in the first place. But in the meantime, we've pretty much tied it up. Five ships apiece, the downside being our Shimikaze making kind of the same blind decision that their Yugamo made. Rushing for the carrier sometimes seems like a good option, but you know, in this game, I was lucky. Gaishu, he's a really good CV captain. I've played with him before, and you can kind of see that based on how many enemy aircraft are in the game, air the rest of this game. He is already obliterated pretty much the entire squadron of that Lexington. And, you know, if you've got a carrier that's getting its ass handed to you, you know, maybe going and taking out that enemy CV and getting the air dominance is a way to go. But... That Shima just, well, I guess, helped me out in a way, dragging the Zhao away. And, well, this Baltimore, she's going to be dead as I pick up my Kraken, nearly 150,000 damage. And with that distraction, once again, out of the way, I've got a decision to make, and I decide we need the cap. You know, I'm playing this based on the idea that the enemy team knows they've got a big enough lead. If they kind of just disappear they'll win this. And that's a huge risk. Now thankfully we do get their Bismarck there and that pulls us a little bit closer, just under 300 points. So preventing these caps really is going to be, in my mind, the way, you know, to secure this game or at least give ourselves a fighting chance. So I'm going for A. You can see in chat, I'm already saying we need caps, come on. And you know, I try to go Montana, go Charlie, Akazuki, go Delta. It's not a great idea to spread yourself out late game. We do outnumber them by one, and right now, the biggest threat isn't enemy ships, it's capture points. So I head straight for A, and I'm just going to get in there, sit, and capture it. Now, I'm also going to try to figure out where the Sow is, maybe where this Minotaur is, I've got some decent hit points, you know, my detection 8.9, if they get 8.9 kilometers away from me without me knowing where they are, or me knowing where they are, eh, there's a problem there because I, I should at least have an idea. And in a way these aircraft are helping out because it's giving this out shots at me and he's taking them, exposing his position. Well, being detected, I obviously return fire and, you know, maybe pushing around the corner, not the smartest use of my time. Perhaps I should have hidden back and just got the capture before trying to push out, but at the time I made the decision and got to live with it. And as the Zhao is slipping away behind the edge of land, I hit my repairs. Things are looking half decent. Over half health, their Minotaur is spotted, their Zhao is spotted, even their Lexington is spotted, and that's because we've got the air. Gaishu's pretty much eliminated every last enemy plane, and even in chat, you know, I'm just saying, let's get the caps, give Gaishu a chance to murder things. And he's doing just that, the Zhao falling victim to his dive bombers, and that puts us a little bit closer. 518, 828. They're down to two ships. And five minutes left. If we can get every cap, we can get this. And I think the Minotaur knows that and got into Bravo to try to force the issue. They have his downside. 
He's not too far from me, and I'm more than willing to chase him down. At this kind of time, I'm really thinking, I'm going to get in there, and I'm just going to put pressure on him, maybe chase him out in front of that Montana, or just get into a close quarter fight where we torp each other to death, and it's a null point. Either way, I'm feeling confident that there's no way I'm sinking without that Minotaur being dead. And if I take him out, it eliminates pretty much the remainder of the threats. And I'm asking Gaishu to get me some vision. He's doing just that, keeping those fighters just on the edge of that Minotaur's AA range. You know, doing his best not to lose them, but giving us eyes. And that's what the carrier can do for you late game. And it's what Gaishu is doing right now. And I do have to be careful here. I want to get in, attack him, but I also have to make sure that Minotaur can't get over and kill Gaishu. Now, his position, probably not known, but it's definitely not a good idea to lose a carrier who's helping out so much. Fortunately, with the Montana spotting that Minotaur, he turns right around, eager to attack, and... I'm all too happy to set up the ambush. And this kill really comes courtesy of Gaishu, who's dropping Torps on that Minotaur, forcing him once again to turn. And I don't know if it was intentional or not that he attacked right at that moment, but I welcome it. First volley, two citadels, second one, not quite so much, but I finish him off with the third, and I got my bow in before he could hurt me seriously. I instantly pop Hydro, because my gut feeling was last ditch torpedoes. Doesn't look like he got him off, and at this point, it's just a waiting game. And it's starting to feel close. The Akazuki got over to Delta, he's captured that. I'm capturing Charlie, and with the Lexington's position known, I'm basically going to sit in this cap and then just try to run him down and I wind up getting a little more damage but the Montana is the one who gets the kill. So let's hop to the post battle. And here we are and it's quite the result. 1.87 million credits, just shy of 21,000 experience, Confederate, Kraken, uh, First Blood, and then a slew of the achievements for the event. Did 181,000 damage <laughs> with just an insane shell count, two torps, and those six kills. And almost as importantly, two solo caps. And you can see how some early captures where your team doesn't get some of their own can really start to stack and hurt you. And that was the case in this one. Fortunately, we started to turn the tide, sank some of their ships, and kept buying ourselves more time enough so that we got all the caps and basically clawed the game back from defeat and that's what made it so enjoyable as far as the experience goes top of the team almost that 3500 mark at 34 and 90 and you can see all four of us who are alive top four on the team and that's kind of the way it should be as far as damage done i spread it out you know i did a lot of damage to some ships i didn't sink and not so much to some I did. Granted, a couple of them were destroyers, which are quick, easy kills when you've got a machine gun. As far as the credits, well, that total isn't entirely true because I got it from a number of flags and events, and it all just added up to be a great game. I hope everyone enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed playing it, and if you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. As always, I'm Quicksilver Slash, and I'll have another one for you all later.